Are you someone who suffers with headaches, one-sided or both-sided? Do you get visual disturbances? Are you sensitive to light? Are you sensitive to sounds? Do you have to go and lock yourself away in a room to help the headache go away? Do you feel nauseous and then sometimes vomit? And do your headaches last from a few hours to potentially even two to three days before they go away and then you keep having recurrent attacks? Well, maybe you might be suffering from a migraine. And this episode today is all about how to treat and manage a migraine. So we're going to get straight into it and my name is Dr. Middenvi Singh and I'm an emergency medicine specialist here in the UK and these are common conditions that we treat and look after every single day. The first thing we need to do is address any predisposing or what we call trigger factors. Some things that may trigger migraines are things like stress, anxiety, certain particular situations that may bring on migraines. 20% of patients who experience migraine it's actually related to diet so actually keeping a diary of trigger factors is going to be massively important because if you fall into one of those categories it may be something that you could resolve. So classic things in the diet that can affect and bring about migraines are cheese, chocolates, citrus fruits and especially alcohol as well. This doesn't mean that you put a blanket ban on different types of foods but it means you keep a diary, you look at what may potentially cause it and you remove that from your diet and see do those types of headaches go away. Other classic things are dehydration so drinking adequate amount of fluid a day is massively important. Other things are such as sleep deprivation or very poor quality sleep. So it's not about the hours that you sleep it's about the quality of the sleep that you have. So it's important to make sure you go to sleep on time you wake up on time and that you're not using devices that emit certain different types of light before you go to sleep because those then actually start to change the way your brain monitors day and night rhythms what we call circadian rhythm and that can then prevent you from having a good effective sleep. Certain medications that you may be taking for example the contraceptive pill or other drugs which are called vasodilators which dilate blood vessels for example blood pressure medications may also potentially be trigger factors for causing migraines so making sure that you have a discussion discussion with your doctor is going to be an important factor in possibly preventing you having migraines. So now onto the juicy stuff which is probably what you're looking for is how do we treat the acute attack of a migraine. So step one the very first thing is very early in the attack you want to get medications such as aspirin at a dose of 900 milligrams or ibuprofen between 400 milligrams to 600 milligrams into your body straight away and the purpose of that is as the later on you go into the attack you start getting something called gastric stasis that's basically where medication food and liquids from your stomach do not move further through the gastrointestinal tract they don't move through your body system and therefore you won't absorb them and therefore you won't get the maximum benefit so used early you're going to get maximum outcome and these doses are all for adults they're not for children or adolescents and these doses have been proven to have a good effective outcome do not use medications that contain opiates, things like codeine, oromorph, morphine, fentanyl, these types of drugs because they will only make migraines much worse. Using tablets such as anti-sickness type of medications are very good but they should be the type of anti-sickness that act as what we call a prokinetic that increase the movement through the bowel which aids and increases in the absorption of the medication meaning it gets in and works through your body system much quicker. Also the second benefit is it prevents sickness and that is something that can make migraines much worse. Anti-sicknesses such as prochlorperazine, it's also known as stematil, is a very good one because you can place it into the cheek known as the buccal area of your mouth and it can absorb from there meaning if you are having sickness you don't have to swallow it to digest it it can absorb straight through your cheeks and the combination of these together has a very good benefit and it's proven and it's actually recommended by BASH the British Association for the Study of Headache and it's the guidelines made by them so it's backed by evidence now for whatever reason if you cannot swallow or you've got a problem to do with excessive vomiting then the other route to take the medication is actually rectally these are called suppositories now you may think this is weird but actually we use this very often in the hospital in our A&E for different other conditions and it works amazing because the rectum actually has a high area of blood vessels which can absorb the medication very quickly so therefore the medication gets into the body quickly and therefore then works very effectively. So something like diclofenac which is in the same group of the non-steroidal medications can be given as a suppository also with an anti-sickness known as domperidone. Now obviously if these medications are contraindicated or they're not acceptable for you for different beliefs or backgrounds then that's absolutely fine we've got the step three that might might potentially help you. So step three is for those patients who have done step one, potentially step two, and they've realized that actually the medication is not working. So in step three, we are using medications such as triptans. 
They go by the name of sumatriptan, almotriptan, elitriptan, frovatriptan, naratriptan, and so forth. Many different types of drugs within this category. So this is the preferred choice of medication when those other medications have failed and you're already in the established attack of a migraine. Triptans work very well and they work on certain receptors within the brain, but there are contraindications. So the following patient should not be using these. Patients with uncontrolled high blood pressure, heart disease, or disease to do with the brain, such as stroke. Another one is those who suffer with a condition known as Pring's metal angina, which is known as coronary artery vasospasm, a spasm of the vessel to do with the heart. So if needing to use this medication in step three, please make sure you consult your doctor or your local pharmacist to make sure that it's suitable and that it's okay and safe for you to use. Now, obviously, if the medication doesn't work and you're still having a migraine, it potentially may mean there's something else going on and therefore you must seek urgent medical advice because the diagnosis may potentially be something different. So assuming it's a migraine could potentially be very dangerous. So remember, if it's the first attack that you've had, you should always seek medical advice because it may not be a migraine. And if the medication doesn't work, it means potentially something else may be going on. And therefore you should have someone who is a doctor who can actually assess and make a correct diagnosis otherwise you might be going down the wrong way so in certain cases there may be something called migraine prophylaxis but that has to be discussed with your general practitioner in order to make sure that you qualify and that it's safe for you to do so a certain example of certain treatments are things like biofeedback relaxation techniques cognitive behavioral therapies which have all been shown and proved by evidence that they do have some benefit acupuncture over 10 sessions over five to eight weeks has also proven to have some benefit as well. And there are also certain medications such as riboflavin and also propanolol, which are medications which have to be discussed by your GP or a specialist before they can be prescribed because they do have side effects and they cannot be used in certain circumstances. But there's also some evidence that they can prevent chronic migraines and recurrent attacks for those patients which the acute attacks are very difficult to treat. There are other medications such as topiramate and amitriptyline, but again, you need to be seen by a specialist and they need to make sure that you are the correct type of person, that you don't have certain risk factors. For example, you can't be pregnant or trying to have a baby. Therefore, you must be in the safe category to use these types of medications. And then NICE has also recommended the use of monoclonal antibodies. Now these are a specific type of medication that bind to a certain receptor known as the CGRP, which is also known as the calcitonin gene related peptide. And these types of medications, again, you have to make sure that you see a specialist and a very specialist use of a medication known as botulinum toxin, also known as Botox, has a very specialist use and therefore is used in those patients who have chronic migraines in which there has been medication overuse. This relates to the importance of only using medication when needed, using medication very safely, and using medication after it's been discussed by a specialist, because it can lead to very serious problems and consequences. Now, important features for when you need to attend the emergency department are your medication isn't working, and therefore something potentially may be going on, which is not a migraine. If you've had a seizure, if you've had confusion, if you've had memory loss or memory impairment, if you've had a weakness in your arm or your leg, or you notice weakness within your face, these are very good reasons to attend the emergency department because potentially something else may be going on. If you have a fever or if you have neck stiffness or if you notice an odd rash, again, very good reasons to attend the emergency department to make sure that we can keep you nice and safe. If you have a change in your conscious level, which is your alertness level, if you become confused or you have a lack of speech or inability to coordinate your movements, very good reasons, again, to attend the emergency department. If it's the first type of headache that you've ever had and it's like this, you shouldn't just put it down to a migraine. You should see your doctor or attend the emergency department if required. A very severe headache that makes you feel like you've been hit in the head is another good reason to attend the emergency department. That, in the rare case, that potentially may be a bleed in the brain and we need to be seeing you for that to assess you to make sure that we can look after you and keep you safe. Anyone who is over the age of 50 who has a new headache or anyone who is under the age of 10 with a headache definitely should be seen within the emergency department. Anyone having headaches with weight loss is another good reason to be seen. And headaches that change in their type of pattern, frequency, or their nature is another good reason to be checked over by a specialist. If you're coughing or sneezing or bending or increasing pressure within your tummy or your chest and it makes your headache worse, 
that's another reason to attend. If you get pain in your jaw, in your tongue or on your scalp, these are also known as red flags where you must attend the emergency department. I want to thank you for watching this episode and I look forward to seeing you all in the next videos. Remember, look after yourself, stay safe, make sure that if you have any concerns, any worries, that you should always speak to your doctor. It's very important. That's what we're here for. We're there to look after you and make sure that we keep you safe. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share and subscribe. Let's help grow this channel so that I can keep doing more educational content for yourselves. Thanks for watching. See you all next time.